All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you, O'Shea, for that introduction. My name is Becca Kessler. I am a learning skills specialist at York University and here to talk to you about learning and academic supports uh, for your incoming student. Before I dive into the content for today, I want to take a moment to give a land acknowledgement. Uh, so this is a practice that we traditionally do at the start of any event, uh, workshop, uh, the first days of classes, just to recognize uh, the territory that York University is situated on. Uh, and so I'm going to briefly read through this slide. We recognize that many indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which our campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. The area known as Takarano has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It is now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. All right, so welcome everyone again. Uh, as I said, my name is Becca. I'm a learning skills specialist here and O'Shea is here with his team and we are all excited to chat with you today. Thank you for popping in the chat uh, where people are joining from. It looks like we have a good mix of local, local citizens and global citizens here as well. Um, so thank you for joining us. Today, I would love for the session to be interactive. Uh, as O'Shea mentioned, you can put any questions that you have in the Zoom chat, but we will also be using uh, Slido, which is an interactive software. Uh, so you can participate and answer some questions throughout uh, that I have for you throughout the session. So if you have a smartphone or if you are able to open another uh, browser, uh, let's test out our Slido here. So you can go to slido.com or scan the QR code here. And I just want to get a sense of who is in the room. So my first question for you is, uh, is this your first time supporting a university learner? Uh, so on your device or in your browser, please select the option that best applies to you. So is this your first time supporting, uh, sending a child or family member to university? Have you sent one somewhere else to a different uh, institution that's not York? Or have you supported uh, current students or alumni at York already? Okay, great. Thank you for your responses. Oh, yep. Thank you. Uh, feel free to also put your responses in the Zoom chat if you prefer to participate that way. Amazing. Okay, so we are in community together. Uh, there's a lot of first timers here, which is really exciting. So again, welcome, welcome. And congratulations uh, for your student being accepted to York. Uh, it's a, an exciting time for everyone. Okay. I'm so grateful to have been invited here to speak to you all today about how you can best set your student up for success when they begin university in the fall. So the agenda for today is that I'm going to introduce you to learning skills services. So that's the department that I'm in. And then I'm going to walk you through four key learning skills that your student should work on developing and refining to achieve academic success. Okay. Within those learning skills, I'm going to give some specific suggestions on how you can best support your student in developing those skills. And then I'm going to take you uh, through a sneak peek of what you and your student will accept, uh, expect um, to experience academically in terms of the first semester. And of course, throughout the presentation, I'm going to highlight a variety of campus resources and services that are available and accessible uh, to all students at York that your students can use uh, throughout their journey. Okay, so let's dive in. 
as I mentioned in the introduction, my name is Becca. I'm a learning skills specialist with Learning Skills Services. So we are a team of two specialists that work with a really fantastic, passionate, knowledgeable group of learning skills learning skills peer educators uh, who help us deliver our uh, programming and support services. Uh, so we work with a really great team of students uh, that help run our workshops and offer drop-in support uh, to students who want to learn how to learn better. What we do is that we support students in building the knowledge, skills, and confidence that they need to excel in university and beyond, okay? Uh, building these skills is especially important uh, since many of the incoming students' um, learning was impacted uh, or disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic, right? So we're seeing a lot of students come in that may not have um, as advanced skills as we might have expected coming out of high school, right? So learning skills in part is here to help students catch up and build up those uh, the skills that they need, okay? Our job is also to look at the most recent research in learning science uh, and deliver information to students about the most up-to-date and evidence-based strategies to help them learn uh, and study most effectively. Learning skills is also um, targeted, <laughs> I guess, towards the entire uh, student population. So undergrads, graduates, across all years, across all programs. Uh, so we are, we are um, catering to the entire university population. And our key services and programs include workshops on uh, the topics that you see on the right, which we deliver almost every day, both virtually and in person. We also offer drop-in uh, sessions to where your students can speak with our learning skills peers. So if your student is struggling with procrastination or need help uh, designing a schedule or a study schedule, right? they can drop in to talk with a peer to work with them uh, to make a plan of action. Uh, we also have a variety of online resources that your students can access on demand whenever they need, right? So this doesn't have to be during business hours. It doesn't have to be coming in to speak with someone one-on-one. -on -one. We have a lot of tips, tricks, videos, uh, downloadable workshops, uh, worksheets and templates uh, that they can use to help structure and guide their approach to learning. Learning Skills Services is also part of the Learning Commons, which is a group of campus services that help support students' development uh, in a wide variety of academic skills, right? So Learning Skills, for example, can help with time management, whereas libraries can help with uh, research. The Writing Center can help people, uh, can help students structure arguments and uh, go through the organization of their papers. Uh, the ESL Open Learning Center can help students develop their English language skills. Uh, there's numeracy and math supports. Uh, there's health ed and promotion, which helps uh, encourage students to focus on their wellness, and a lot, a lot more. All of these services usually offer drop-in and bookable appointments with workshops, online resources uh, that students can access at any time. So the Learning Commons is a great resource to keep in mind as your student kind of begins their academic journey here. Uh, and someone will put the link in the chat to the Learning Commons so you can uh, review those services uh, more on your own. Okay. So I mentioned that one of the main roles of Learning Skills Services is to support students in building learning skills. But what does that mean? What is a learning skill? So I'm gonna pose this question to you all. What do you think? So you can use the Zoom chat or you can use Slido uh, to tell me what comes to mind when you hear the term learning skills. See someone was typing.
What comes to mind when you hear learning skills? Okay, so learning properly, learning efficiently, techniques to succeed academically. Great. Transferable skills. Yes, so skills that can be applied in courses, but also uh, in the workplace and in your personal life. Strategies. Great. Oh, whoa, a bunch just came in. Okay, helping, studying, understanding, learning productively, right? Amazing, amazing. Okay, thank you. So these are great responses. So learning skills really encompass anything that is necessary in order to be an effective and efficient learner. So developing and refining your learning skills is an ongoing process. And now I'm going to take you through a closer look at four specific learning skills and talk about how you can best support your student as they work towards building these skills. So thank you for your contributions here. Okay. So an important learning skill in itself is actually learning how to learn. So we encourage students to empower, uh, or we encourage and empower students to take ownership of their learning and really reflect on their learning processes. So for example, the way that students took notes in high school may not be the most effective way to take notes in a university course. And this realization should stimulate action, right? Like trying a new note-taking strategy that might be more effective. Learning is also a really active process, okay? Students are not sitting in a lecture hall or reading a textbook and absorbing information passively, right? The intent is not to come out of university having memorized a bunch of facts. Students need to interact really deeply with the content that they're exposed to in order to solidify their learning. Okay? They need to make connections to the real world. They need to ask critical questions. They need to be able to put thoughts into their own words and come up with examples. Right? It's an active process. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes effort. The fancy term for learning how to learn is called metacognition. And this metacognitive cycle that you see on the right shows the process of how students should be reflecting on their learning, on how they're learning, okay? So let's return to the example of taking notes in lecture. So assess the task, taking lecture notes. And when students are planning their approach, right, they might reflect, oh, in high school, you know, I took notes by hand. But in this lecture class, I want to take notes using my laptop. Okay. Then students need to apply a specific strategy. So, for example, let's say that the professor is giving a PowerPoint presentation like this one uh, and makes the slides available before class. So, let's say that your student um, thinks, okay, I'm going to have the PowerPoint slides open and I'm going to take notes in the PowerPoint as my professor is speaking. That's the strategy, okay? After your student takes notes that way, they should be reflecting on it, right? What was that process like? Was I able to capture the information that I needed to capture? Uh, will the notes be helpful when I look back at them when I'm reviewing for an exam? Is there anything that this strategy um, prevented me from doing, right? If a professor drew a diagram on the board, was I able to capture that in the notes or did I need an extra piece of paper, right? And then the feedback portion of that is using the conclusions that they make from the reflections to apply improvements or to try new things and to repeat the cycle, okay? So through this example, through using this reflective cycle, you can really see how active and effortful learning is. 
And this is just one example of taking notes in lecture, right? They can use this to reflect on how they take notes from a textbook. They can use this to reflect on how they're studying for exams, okay? So students have to take this initiative to think critically about how they're approaching their learning uh, and to make the necessary changes or um, pivots, right? So luckily though, your students do not have to do this alone, right? Learning skills services and other academic supports on campus are here to help them uh, through this process. So your role when it comes to this specific learning skill is to simply talk to your student about how they're approaching their learning, okay? Um, so checking in periodically with your student and kind of acting as a soundboard for how they're approaching their studies is a great way to support your student and also a great way to stay up to date with how they're doing in their classes, okay? You can also play a role in the development of the skill by encouraging and assisting your student to seek support. Okay, so you can encourage them to make connections and utilize campus resources to get this process going. One great resource that I want to highlight is the professors and teaching assistants that your students will have. Okay, professors and teaching assistants usually have set office hours during the week where your students can drop in and ask questions. Uh, request feedback on assignments, and have an opportunity to bring up any concerns or questions that they might have about the course, right? So you can really encourage your students to take advantage of this opportunity to make connections uh, and have more face time with their instructors. Uh, and the other thing that you can do is keep the campus resources and services in mind so that you can remind your students, hey, uh, these services are here, these resources are here, and encourage them to uh, make the most of them, right? So of specific note is Learning Skill Services and the Learning Commons Partners uh, for these uh, learning and academic skills, okay? One other thing you can do here is to recognize that learning how to learn is an ongoing process, okay? Your student is coming into this new environment where the demands and expectations are much higher than what they might have experienced in high school, okay? So if you have a student that was an A, A plus student in high school, that does not guarantee that they're gonna get those same marks in university. Okay, and this is normal. So if your student is not coming home with the same marks that you're used to seeing on a high school report card, uh, try not to panic, okay? This is normal. There's a learning curve. There's a period of adjustment and transition and your student needs time to figure it out and get in their groove, okay? The second key learning skill that I want to touch on is time management. So a common misconception is that learning takes place entirely in a lecture hall, in a classroom, that students just need to show up, pay attention, and listen. But this is not the case, okay? For every hour that a student spends in a lecture hall, they should be spending an hour and a half of time outside of class doing the readings, working on assignments, reviewing for exams, um, and adding to, their, adding to their notes, right? Making connections to other courses and other real life examples. When students follow this guideline, 1.5 hours of study time for every hour of lecture, that really, really adds up such that being a full-time student is the equivalent time commitment of having a full-time job, okay? When you sprinkle in all of the other responsibilities that your student might have, a part-time job, uh, family responsibilities, chores, 
having fun, <laughs> having fun and, and socializing with friends, sleep, and for a lot of York students, uh, a long commute, they have a full day uh, of, of time that is just eaten up and they have a lot to juggle. And so time management is a really, really important skill that your students need in order to stay organized, get a new routine and make sure that they have uh, time to do everything that they need to do. So learning skill services has a lot of tips, tricks, templates and a time management workshop that students can use to get organized, create a schedule and stay on track. Uh, students will likely have to test out and experiment with what strategies work best for them. And this process may take some trial and error before they find what works for them. Okay. In terms of supporting your student with time management, you can talk to them about how they're managing their time. Uh, so encourage that reflection, right? Uh, ask them if they're getting enough sleep. Ask them if they're taking enough breaks. Um, make sure that they're balancing out uh, all of their studying with some fun. Um, and importantly, communicate, especially if you have a student that's still living at home or if you're if they're not living at home and you like to video chat or FaceTime uh, pretty regularly, make sure that you're on the same page about when they're studying and when they need to do chores or when you're going to have your nightly social call, right? If they have set out a really organized, nice structured schedule and their dedicated study time is 7 to 9 p.m., that's not the time to schedule a call or to ask them to take out the trash, right? So being on the same page about when you're studying and uh, when you're asking them to do other things is a great way to get on the same page. You can also uh, encourage them to plan ahead and ask for major assignment deadlines uh, or upcoming exams so you know when to check in uh, and you can get a sense of times in the semester where maybe they're going to be overloaded and can't take extra things on um, and things like that, right? So it's getting on the same page. It's communicating about uh, when they're studying and when they're free. Uh, that will be uh, helpful. So I want to do a brief pause to check in and see how people are feeling. Uh, so based on the information that I've given so far, how, how are you feeling? Positive, <laughs> confused, overwhelmed, excited? What are you feeling? Okay, excited, informed, supported, some are overwhelmed, some are nervous, and a lot of you have lots of questions, which is great. All right, thank you so much for telling me how you're, where you're at, and we'll keep moving on. Again, we will get to all your questions at the end. Okay, the third learning skill I want to highlight is prioritizing well-being. So at York, we understand wellness to be comprised of multiple different domains, physical, emotional, social, financial, academic, environmental, and spiritual. And each of these aspects of wellness are connected. And it's difficult to be well in one aspect if another aspect is suffering, okay? So to put this into perspective, students are really prone to overextending themselves when it comes to academics. They might feel a lot of pressure to keep reading, to keep studying, to keep practicing. And when they invest too much time, energy, and resources into their academics, the other dimensions of their wellness might suffer. 
So a common example would be giving up some of their sleep, right? Cutting back on sleep so that they have more hours to study. But the consequence of this is that they'll be more tired when they're in lecture or they will be unable to focus, right? When they're in an exam setting. And this can have a detrimental effect on their academics. Our colleagues in health education and promotion, uh, which someone will put the link to in the chat, uh, have a really great analogy of uh, having a flat tire. So uh, if one part of the tire becomes punctured, right, the rest of the wheel is affected and it becomes deflated and, uh, and unable to function. And the takeaway message here is that we don't want our students to have flat tires, right? We want them to be able to prioritize their wellness so they can keep on rolling through the semester. Now, prioritizing wellness does not mean that your student should not or will not experience stress. So stress is a normal part of life and an extremely common feeling in a university setting. And stress can actually be a positive motivating force if it exists within a reasonable level, okay? When stress turns from being motivational into, um, <laughs> into being negative, right? It can really dramatically affect performance. Okay, so we want students to have their stress levels be in this positive, healthy zone where they are extra attentive, they're motivated, and they are able to perform at their, at their best, right? As your students transition into the university environment, it will be important for them to practice self-awareness and to recognize the signs of when they might be experiencing uh, stress levels that are too high, that are outside of their coping mechanisms. This is when you might notice that they're feeling overwhelmed or fatigued or burnt out or really discouraged. And so we encourage students to have a plan, right? And to make that plan in advance when they're not feeling overly stressed so that they are prepared to react uh, right when they notice those warning signs. So your role here is that you can help to encourage your student uh, to prioritize their well-being across all of the dimensions of wellness, right? Your student is here to learn new knowledge, skills, make connections with others, uh, and earn a degree that will set them up to be successful in the future, right? But the road to the degree will be a lot more challenging and might even be put at risk if they're unable to prioritize their wellness, right? University is really a marathon. It's not a sprint, and your students need to sustain their health and well-being in order to uh, accomplish their goals, right? You know your student best, okay? So you can help them prioritize their wellness by checking in with them and helping them to identify when they might be approaching their limits, right? Uh, and working with them to create a plan of what to do when they get to that point because realistically, they will probably get to this point at some time or another during their journey, okay? Luckily, and thankfully at York, we have two really great and free resources that students can access to support their wellness. So that is Health Ed and Promotion, which has great uh, workshops and um, information about a variety of health topics and also student counseling, health and well-being, which I think I saw the link float uh, in the chat already, where they offer one-on-one -on -one counseling, group counseling, workshops, and a bunch of other resources uh, to help students um, be well and stay well. Uh, another thing that you can do as parents and family is to exercise extra patience and understanding uh, when your student is experiencing times of high stress, 
right? Students are often doing their best and knowing that they can turn to their family for empathy, for understanding, for support really makes all of the difference. And of course, I can't pass up the opportunity to recommend leading by example, right? You've likely been your student's role model since the, <laughs> the beginning of their lives and that doesn't stop now that they are young adults going off on their own. Uh, so be sure to take care of yourselves as well. And if you, uh, you and your student both have areas of wellness that maybe you're prone to neglecting, uh, you, can, you can be each other's accountability buddies and, and start that journey together. All right, the last learning skill that I wanna highlight today is developing a mindset for success. So this is called a growth mindset. And it means that you believe that you can accomplish your goals through dedication, perseverance, and hard work, okay? You believe that you have the potential and you can develop the skills that you need to succeed, right? If students experience a setback or a failure, they are not down for the count, right? They believe that their goal is still reachable. And this is a really important mindset for students to be able to cultivate because they will face obstacles, they will be challenged, uh, and their limits might be pushed. And we don't want students to fall into this trap where they think that, where they think, I just can't do it, I'm not good enough, uh, because this is a really tough mindset to escape. So in cultivating this mindset, it's really important to celebrate accomplishments, to look at challenges as learning opportunities, right, as chances to prove themselves, to try new things, to um, experiment with new strategies, and to reach new heights, okay? So once they get into this mindset, once they embrace it, uh, this leads to really resilient uh, and optimistic human beings. This learning skill is one where you as parents and family might have the biggest influence on because your students likely care and care really deeply about your reactions to their academic performance in university, right? So I recognize that there might be a lot, a lot at stake here when you send a student to university and that you really want to do everything in your power to make sure that they succeed and that your student is successful. And when so much is at stake, emotions can run really high, okay? So the takeaway here is that the challenges that your students will face, the setbacks, and sometimes even the failures, uh, are a normal and necessary part of their learning and of their personal growth, okay? So I'll challenge you and encourage you as parents and family to think about how you might respond when your student tells you about these types of situations, right? How will you communicate what you feel? How will you respond in a way that makes your students still feel supported and still feel motivated and want to keep trying, right? Want to pick themselves up and, and keep going. So these moments of struggle will be really pivotal for your students because these are the times when your student will need you for reassurance, right? They'll need to hear that you believe in them and that you think that they can succeed, right? So take care in these moments to encourage them to exercise their agency and respond proactively uh, to either start recovering from their setback or to start tackling the challenge that they're facing, okay? Importantly, do your best to resist taking control of the situation because this is ultimately your student's journey. Uh, you are there to accompany them as they face these challenges and as they figure out uh, how to move forward. This is their time to exercise their independence, to discover their power, and to learn what works best for them. Okay, so you are your student's biggest champion, and it's important for them to know that you're there to support them through the ups and the downs. So this wraps up our discussion about learning skills and some suggestions for what you can do to best support your students. 
and while your students are adjusting to university life, you will also be adjusting to your student being in university. And so there's lots of change on the horizon. I hope some of the information that I presented can bring you some comfort uh, and that helping and awareness and knowledge that helping your student develop these skills and navigate university uh, can be a very collaborative process between you and your student. And it's a great way to stay informed about your student's progress and to ensure that you stay connected and aware of what they're experiencing throughout the year. The last thing before I wrap up uh, is just providing a quick overview of what you can expect during a typical semester at university, uh, specifically in terms of the academic cycle. So this is the semester at a glance. Fall semester is really going to be here before you know it. Uh, and when classes start in September, your student is going to dive in. So they will be experiencing this whole new world, making connections uh, and adjusting to their new environment, right? And these first few weeks are going to fly by. In October, this is when midterm season begins. This is when students may be receiving uh, their marks back on uh, early assignments or their first exam. And this is where uh, reality might hit a little bit, right? Where they might uh, realize that university is a lot more difficult and maybe a lot more challenging than what they experience in high school. This is a good time as parents and family to, to check in and to remind students of what campus resources and supports are out there and encourage them to access those supports early, right? Don't wait until the end of the term. Don't wait until the second set of midterms. If um, issues are arising or if, there's, um, if they're experiencing challenges, now is the time to reach out for support. Reading week is a break in October where there are no courses. And this is a great time for students to either focus or not either, to <laughs> focus on uh, studying for upcoming midterms, but to also take time to rest, reset, relax, uh, and kind of get re-energized for the second half of the semester. Midterms continue into November, and this is where you may notice your student starting to get a little burned out right? It's been a couple of weeks, there's been an exam period, and things might be getting stressful, and they might be getting bogged again, down again. Uh, so check in, refer to resources, and encourage them to keep going. December is when classes end, and students will experience their first exam period. Uh, so there might be a lot of nerves and anxiety and uncertainty around this time. Uh, so again, approach that with uh, compassion and understanding and encourage your students to reach out for support uh, if they need it. And then winter break, uh, where there are no courses, exams are over, and you can spend that time celebrating with your student that they made it through their very first semester of university. Okay, so I just want to take a moment to review what I covered so far. Achieving academic success in university really comes down to students taking ownership of their learning and investing the time, energy, and effort into developing the skills that help them learn more effectively and efficiently. Okay, this is time management, this is critical thinking, this is maintaining their well being, this is figuring out how to take the best notes. Uh, so remember that learning skills services is here to offer a variety of workshops, uh, one on one peer support, um, and online resources that can really help get your students um, on the right track or improve the skills that they already have. As parents and family, your role is really to support your students in developing these skills by talking with your students and working with them uh, to think about how they're approaching their learning, okay? So this is your student's journey and you are accompanying them through it uh, and acting as a really dependable companion as they are going forward. 
Your students can also depend on the campus resources and services throughout their entire time at York. So I've highlighted uh, a few throughout this presentation that are especially relevant uh, to setting your students up for academic success. Uh, so keep these in mind, uh, keep these bookmarked um, as your student progresses throughout the year to help them in identifying which one might be most appropriate for whatever they're experiencing uh, at any time in the semester. Okay. Almost at the Q&A portion, uh, but I want to end with a final Slido question here. If you could take a minute to reflect on what I've presented so far uh, and what you know to be true about yourself and about your student, what are one or two things that you will commit to do to support your students' academic success this year? What do you think will be most helpful for your students? Uh, what do you think you would be able to commit to do? feel free to enter your answers in the chat as well. Fantastic. Listen and be supportive. Yes, yes. See some other people typing. <laughs> Remind the student about the amazing resources provided at work at York. <laughs> yes, yes, great. Uh, all of the resources that I've mentioned so far are so passionate about providing great service and support to your students, and we want students to come to us. We want students to ask for help. Uh, so your uh, prompting, your reminders uh, that we are here and we're ready and willing to help is amazing. Helping with time management and being self-directive. Yes, yes, awesome. Thank you everyone. Uh, and make strategies to find the best way to learn and understand the information, right? making strategies, reflecting on those strategies, uh, and adjusting as we go. 